We try to speak English, but sometimes we speak French. French English? I learned French as an adult, and George, I brought him back to Alberta with me, and he had to learn English. He didn't speak any English, and I didn't speak any French when we met. And then he speaks Mina, and my concern is that when he's old, that he'll con revert to Mina, and I won't understand him. <laughs> we met in a laundry in the laundry room. We were both students at um, Laval University. I arrived and Greyhound had lost, this is a great story, gotta tell you. So Greyhound had lost my luggage, so I had only my backpack, one change of clothes, so I had to go straight to the laundry room, and he was the only other human in it, and I thought he was kind of a flirty womanizer type, and we kind of, you know, we really didn't speak each other's language, and we kept bumping into each other, and I think within two weeks we were kind of hanging out together. <laughs> in my family, I'll only chat, Living here in Edson, all my brother and sister, they still live in Africa, so I find that really be unique. Honestly, as a teacher, I like to teach here. I've actually lived in this exact house that we are filming outside of for uh, my entire life, except for like three months. I get to form good relationships with my teachers because we have, I would say, like relatively small classes to what you may seem in like big cities. So like I get to know people personally and that means that I get to have a slightly better like education focused on what I need. But yeah, Edson has been a really good place to raise a family. The arts community, sports, George has refed and coached in lots of sports and I am very unathletic but I even got involved <laughs> in like children's sports. It wasn't a very diverse community when we showed up. Um, we got a lot of strange looks, kids loved to stare at him but he was from the get-go like really just welcomed into his school community well loved and, and it's been a really good place for us i would want to just raise awareness or talk about the fact that we lost our firstborn our beautiful boy to suicide 20 months ago um, people in town we live in a very supportive community so people will know that and I think it's really important to um, remove shame from the conversation. A lot of our youth struggle, and then our LGB youth actually struggle seven times more than their peers with suicidality or attempts. I just think it's a conversation that is still incredibly stigmatized. People live, young people live with so much fear and shame, and we, pay a lot of lip service to the idea of talking openly about our mental health and the reality or the lived experience is actually a whole other matter. Lost in our son? Yeah. It's, it's helping me now as teacher to see more or to understand more the kid in class too. Have yeah. more compassion. And... Compassion, yeah. Yes. They said the kids they are struggling in class. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it really opens your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. I, I guess what I would want is just say we are so proud of our son and our, you know, all of our children. He was an amazing person and his struggle with mental illness and um, persistent suicidality and severe depression, is, it was part of his story, but it wasn't the fullness of who he was. And so, yeah, as a family, we just think it's really important to use our resources and our voice to open up the conversation and just refuse that there be any shame over simply being a messy human in a messy world or just a very real person. Like we all, you know, we're all just doing our best to navigate this world and it's rough sometimes, so.